Hey everybody, this is Games Plus James, and welcome back to our Unity RPG tutorial series. Now in the last couple of episodes we've been making our little dialogue for our player, uh, but at the moment we can still walk around like crazy. Our villager can walk around too, so we can walk off over here somewhere and we're still continuing our conversation, which is obviously not very good and not what we want happening. So we're going to fix it up so that our villager can't move and also our player cannot move. So I'm just going to stop this running here. So first thing we're going to do is deal with the villager. So obviously to fix this up, we're going to need to go into our scripts. So we're going to open up um, our dialogue uh, holder, which is what tells our villager, or when we walk into that area, we activate our dialogue. Um, we're going to open that script and we're also going to open our villager movement script. So we're going to open both of those up in mono develop here. I have a couple of them open here for me and here we go so in our villager movement script basically we're going to add a variable to control whether our villager can move at any particular time so to do that we're going to add a, a public bool so below our other stuff here we're going to add a public bool that we're going to call can move so this is what we're going to use to decide whether our player should be allowed to move around in the world. Uh, so by default, or not our player, sorry, our villager, um, but by default we obviously want it to be true. We want our villager to be able to wander around whenever he can. So in our start function, we're going to make sure that we always set our can move is equal to true, just in case we make any changes to it uh, somewhere else by accident. Because obviously by default it starts off as false. Um, so what we're going to do is add just an extra little check here in our update loop before we move our uh, our villager around. So at the moment we have it checking if it's walking or if it's not walking and it does all the various different counts along the way. So we could make it just uh, always be not walking for a certain amount of time but it's easier just to add an extra little check here so that, that will actually stop any other bits of code running. So all we have to do is add uh, an if statement here and we're going to say if not can move so or sorry if not if um so if can move is false basically is what we're saying here so if our can move is false so therefore we're saying if our villager can't move if that's false then what we want to do is make sure that the rigid body uh, velocity is being set to zero because we don't want our villager starting to move and then we go to the next uh, next uh, update frame and we get to this point and we're saying oh we can't move so we're going to stop doing all of this stuff afterwards. So what we're going to do is make sure that our velocity is set to be zero, so he's not going anywhere. So my rigid body dot velocity is now equal to vector two dot zero. So that'll just make sure his x and his y velocity are set to be zero. And the next thing we're going to do is hit, or not hit, we're going to type in return. And what return does is it basically says, okay, if you, or it says to, to Unity, if you see this line, stop whatever comes next and just stop processing. So it'll go, okay, I see a return. It doesn't just stop what happens next in the if loop. So we have our if loop. If we got to this line, that would be the end of the loop and we'd go on to do whatever. But what return does is actually it cancels out of the update loop altogether. So that means none of the rest of this stuff down here will actually occur. So therefore our player won't, or our villager won't start moving around within the world. So now that we have that there, we need a way to actually set this to occur. So how can we set this to occur? Well, we know that we want our villager not to be moving when our dialogue is activated. And our dialogue is being activated by when our player walks into the, the, the trigger area around the villager and we use the dialogue holder script here to activate the um, the di dialog box. So what we're going to do in here is just add an extra check and see. So we have this uh, dialog holder and at the moment we have this working on our villager uh, to show the dialog. But we, this is a pretty generic script. This doesn't actually have to be attached to our, our villager. So this could just be attached to a random object in the world. We could have it be say, if we go back in here for a second, uh, we just have to wait for this to compile down here, but say say this tree here, for example, 
we could have a bit of dialogue uh, we could have a dialogue zone around this tree that if the player walks up to it and tries to uh, do anything with it it'll give a little description of that's a old tree where are all, all its leaves gone or something like that but the point being that would be an object that is never going to move so we wouldn't have to ever tell that not to move so what we want to do is just do an extra check to see if this dialogue zone is um, attached to something that has the villager movement script and if it does then we can tell it not to move anymore so how we will do that is right here so this is this is the area where our dialog box is being activated so we have after our player presses space then it sends out this little stuff to activate the dialog box and the next thing we want to do just after that is say if our um actually no we won't put it just after the player presses space no we will i was going to move it so that it happens whenever the player walks into the zone so that the villager doesn't move out of the area but we want our villagers to be able to walk around whenever they want so we will keep this within this space uh, within this if statement here but we're going to say if our transform dot parent so our transform dot parent is basically saying our dialogue holder script is attached over here to our dialog zone so what it's saying is get the transform of this and get what is the parent object of it so that's our rpg villager here and then on that object, what we're going to do is get the component on there. We're going to say get component. And the component we want to get that we know is attached to this one is our villager movement script. So we're going to say get component villager villager movement. And we put our two curly brackets like that. And what we're doing is we're going to do, say uh, not, equal, not equals null. So what we're doing here is in our if statement, we're saying if we try to get the parent and get the component of the villager movement, if that is not equal to null, so basically we're saying if is able to find a villager movement uh, component on whatever parent object is attached to the script, if that's true, then we're going to do something in here and the something we want to do is obviously set our can move on our villager to be false so we will say so if that's true if it has a villager movement script then we can say okay we can do transform dot parent dot get component again and get the exact same thing and we can just say dot can move is equal to uh sorry not true false so now a villager won't actually be able to move around within the world so let's just check that in action here just go back in wait for this to compile give it a second or two and we should see that our villager will actually stop moving once he walks into or once we start talking to him so we go near him he's still able to wander around if you give him a second if we activate our dialogue there we go so he walked up a little bit so he's in the middle of his walk cycle at the moment um, but so we're still free to move around but he's now frozen in space if we go through the rest of this we would expect him to continue his movement upwards but we don't actually have anything to tell him that he's allowed to move again so we have him nicely frozen like this but he's frozen there forever now and that's no good to us so we'll go back into our scripts and what we can do is on our villager movement we what we could do is obviously on our in our dialogue manager which controls the box we could have something there that relates directly to this villager to tell him to become active again but what's much more simple because we only have one dialogue manager in our scene we know that we can make a reference to that dialogue manager and what we can do is just check and see if the dialogue box is active or not at the moment and if it's no longer active then our villager is allowed to move again so what we can do in our villager movement script we can just add a new um private dialogue manager dialogue manager if i could spell these things would be okay there we go dialogue manager that we'll call the dm and then in our start function we will say the dm is equal to find object of type dialogue 
manager like that and then at the start of our update loop before we do this check to see if we're allowed to move we want to be able to see if we can reset our can move so what we'll do is say if in our dialog manager if dialog manager dot um what's it we call this dialog active yes there we go uh, nice and straightforward if dialog manager dot dialog is that not a public variable? It's not. No, it is. Public bool. There's no reason why that shouldn't be... Okay, that's just... Uh, Monodevelop being annoying. So, dialog uh, active. Let's just make sure we have that uh, same spelling. No, we don't. So, I'm just going to paste that in there. So, with the exact same spelling. So, if dialog manager dot dialog active... So if our dialog manager is currently is active, um, then we will say. Actually, you know what we want to do is check if that is false. So if dialog manager dot so if not dialog manager dot dialog active. So when our dialog is no longer active on the screen, we can say okay. In that case, our can move should be equal to true, like that. So we can save this. So that means that whenever there's no dialogue happening on the screen, all our villager, any object in the world that has a village, villager movement script attached to it, is free to move around the world. And, oh, we got a bit of a, oh, that's what I was doing. This shouldn't be the dialogue manager. That should just be the DM. That's why we were getting the wrong thing there. That should be two capital letters. Yeah. Okay, so it's the DM that dialog active because we set the DM as the the name of the object, not the di dialog manager as the type. So it should be the DM that dialog active, and if it's no longer act if that's not not active, then our villager should be free to move around again. So we'll go back in here, and I'm actually going to duplicate this villager so that we should see that although we stop one when we talk to him. There will be another one that is free to move around within the world. So I'm just going to move him over here. We're going to hit play and give it a second. Okay, so we'll talk to this guy. We see the other villager is free to move around, but our villager here is not free at all. But of course, our player is still free. So let's do something very similar with our player to make sure that our player can't move around the world either. So we we'll obviously need our player controller script and we we'll also want our dialogue manager script. So I have both of them open here. So on our player controller itself, we want to do something very similar as we did with the villager, which is to create a, a public bool. So down here, we're going to say public bool that again, we'll keep it simple and call it can move. And then down here, so we have our player moving is equal to false. That's being reset for some other stuff that we're doing. So we're going to, just after that code, we're going to add in um, if not can move. So if our player can't move, then we want to do the same as we did with the villager. We want to make sure that our player's movement is completely stopped. So we'll do my rigid body dot velocity dot uh, sorry, not that, not that. My rigid body dot velocity is equal to vector two dot zero. And again, we're going to use return so that none of our other input or anything like that will have any effect on what our player is doing. Okay, so we'll save that. And then we need to be able to activate and deactivate where our player can move. So we could do like we did with our villager here, we could use our dialog manager to control whether our player can move, but we could have, we're introducing this uh, move, our ability to move for the player here with this dialog manager, but we could have lots of other situations that will control whether the player can move. For example, if we do cutscenes or anything like that in the future, we wouldn't want our player to be able to move around in the world. So what we're going to do 
is actually use the dialog manager to control whether we can move. So what we're going to so we're only going to be setting uh, on or off for the player's movement with the dialog manager. So that means that, like I said, if we do um, if we want to use something else to turn the player's movement off, then we can have it, it that it will stay off. Whereas if we were to use the villager method here, it would it would go it would be reset to be uh, to be on straight away because there was no dialogue on screen. So we have two different situations in our dialogue manager. We have here where our dialogue box is being deactivated and we have here where our dialogue box is being activated. So those are two perfect times to set whether the player can move or not move. So up here we're obviously going to need a reference to the player itself so we're going to add a private player controller that we'll call the player and then in our start function obviously we're going to add the player is equal to uh, find object of type player oh sorry player controller oh we're getting all kinds of crazy things happening here oh I'm just typing I'm just typing things all over the place uh, player controller there we go Okay, so the player is equal to find object of type player controller and then what we can do here where our uh, dialog box is being deactivated at that point we know we want our player to be able to move again so we will say the player dot can move is equal to true and then down here where our dialog box is being activated we can just say the player dot can move is equal to false. So there you go, nice and simple and straightforward, not too complicated, but when we go back in here to the game and start things running again, just let it compile and we should see that we now are able to actually restrict our players movement so they don't go running all over the place while there's dialogue boxes happening. So we will Oh, of course, our player is by default set that can move is equal to false. So in our start function, we're going to make sure that can move is true. So that our player is actually allowed to move around within the world. Of course, we could just do that by ticking uh, that box on our player here. Where's our player controller scripts? Here we go. We could set can move is equal to true. I'm not sure why that's showing up as a an error there since I didn't make any changes to the slime controller script okay I just had to close and reopen unity there because it was throwing an error which wasn't actually an error it was just a bit of a glitch in unity but that's okay but our scripts are now compiled so we can hit play here and we can walk over to our little villagers um, let's go for this guy so he's no longer able to move the player I'm pressing all the buttons here for movement but we're not getting any movement going on uh, we should be able to see the other guy moving around he's just kind of wandering over there to the side uh, so if we go through the rest of our text now we're free to move again and our other villager is also free to move and it's perfectly working just the way we wanted so there you go that's how we can control our players movement within the world uh, when we've got dialogue boxes happening and make it sure that you know our player can't just wander off all over the place because we could end up in strange situations where we have our dialogue box open we load into a new area and dialogue boxes are still open that's how you end up with game breaking bugs basically so that's it for this episode thanks for watching i will be back soon with some more rpg tutorial goodness in the very near future goodbye Thanks for watching this episode, and if you want to learn more about developing your own games, you can follow the link on screen to my complete 2D platformer game development course on Udemy, where you will learn how to program and build a complete game in Unity 2D with multiple levels, enemies, and unique boss battles. So click the link on screen or in the description below and get the course today.